This video covers details about the string data type in Go, and its relationship with byte and rune data types. When trying to understand string data type in detail, it's better to have a basic understanding of Unicode and UTF-8 encoding schemes. I have a video covering these details and it is linked in the description of this video. Although it is not necessary, I recommend watching that video first. There are two forms of string value literals, interpreted strings and raw strings. The interpreted strings are the ones you write in double quotes. In an interpreted string, the escaped control characters have special meanings. For example, the backslash n here will be replaced with the code for line feed or a new line. The raw string literal is written with back quotes. The raw string doesn't treat the escaped characters with any special meaning. The same backslash n will be treated as two different characters backslash and n. You can verify this by printing the byte slice representation of the string in both raw and interpreted form. For the interpreted string, that is, the string in double quotes, the byte representation for backslash n only contains code 10 which is the Unicode code for the new line. The same backslash n in a raw string is represented using two bytes. 92 is the code for the backslash character and 110 is the code for lowercase n. The Go language decides how to present the code points to the output device, which is normally a terminal, and it is up to the terminal how to interpret these bytes. As far as the content of a string is concerned, it is exactly equivalent to a slice of bytes. The runtime representation of a string is specified in the reflect package as a struct with two fields. The first field is a pointer to the first element in the underlying array of bytes. The second element is the length of this underlying array. Unlike slices, there is no field to represent capacity. This is because strings are immutable. Once you create them, you cannot modify them in place, you can only create new strings. The built-in len function returns the number of bytes in this underlying array. An important thing to notice here is that this length may not be the same as the number of letters or graphemes in the text. As we have already learned in the video about encodings, UTF-8 encoding is a variable length encoding and some code points may take more than one byte. In Go, the data type rune is a built-in alias for int32. A rune value is intended to store a Unicode code point. Graphemes that fit in one Unicode code point can be specified within single quotes. Since rune is an alias to int32, if you simply print it, the integer value will be shown. The percent %c format specifier can be used to print the grapheme. Generally, we can view a code point as a character or grapheme, but some graphemes are composed of more than one code point each. Graphemes that require more than one Unicode code point cannot be stored in a variable of rune data type. Remember, a rune is for storing a single Unicode code point. For such graphemes, you need to use a string data type. A rune is the same as an int32 data type, which takes four bytes. As you can see, the second emoji consists of two runes and thus takes eight bytes. Similar to how we convert a string into a slice of bytes, we can also convert a string into a slice of runes. Then each item in the slice will be a Unicode value. Go supports different syntaxes to use Unicode values. Here, all these are for storing the English lowercase character a. The Unicode value for lowercase a is 97 in the decimal number system. 141 is the equivalent value in the octal number system. You can use a backslash followed by exactly three octal digits to represent a rune value. Similarly, 61 is the equivalent value in the hexadecimal number system. You can write backslash x followed by exactly two hex digits to represent a rune value. For larger Unicode values, you can use a backslash lowercase u followed by four hex digits or a backslash uppercase u followed by eight hex digits to represent a rune. For example, the hexadecimal representation of the Unicode value for thumbs up emoji contains five hex digits. So you have to use the backslash followed by uppercase u. Like most other programming languages, the underlying bytes of string values are immutable. A string value can only be overwritten as a whole by assigning another string value to it. 
Go also doesn't allow you to create a pointer to any individual bytes in the string. You can use the subsly syntax to get a substring of the current string. Here, the start and end are both indexes of bytes stored in the string. The destination string variable and source string value in a string assignment will share the same underlying byte sequence in memory. When you use the forRange loop, it will iterate the Unicode code points in the string. Each element is a room value. Notice that the iteration index may not be continuous. This is because some Unicode points may require more than one byte to represent them. If you index a string, Go indexes for the underlying bytes and not rooms. So in this example, you get the second byte in the string and not the second Unicode value. When we print the value, it shows the character corresponding to the value stored in that byte. However, our string doesn't contain this character. The built-in len function also returns the number of bytes in the string and not the runes. You may use the regular for loop if you want to iterate over the bytes in a string. Or you may use the range loop after converting the string into a slice of bytes. Remember that the range loop is not iterating over each letter or grapheme, but on individual Unicode points. Some graphemes might need more than one Unicode point to represent them. For example, this is a single character or grapheme. But it is composed of two runes. When you use the range loop, you will see two runes. The UTF-8 package in the standard library provides helper functions to work with text encoded in UTF-8. A special Unicode value called the Unicode replacement character is used to represent bad UTF-8 encodings. Wherever there is bad encoding is found in the string, it will be replaced with this Unicode value. This value is displayed as shown here. You might be knowing that the Go source code has to be encoded in UTF-8. This means that variables, function names, etc. must consist of UTF-8 code points. However, this does not mean that strings in Go must only contain valid UTF-8 data. In our example, the string had invalid characters. So far we have seen the relationship between strings, bytes, and runes. Go also provides ways to convert a string to a slice of bytes or a slice of runes. Similarly, both slice of bytes and slice of runes can be converted to a string. When a string is converted to a byte slice, the resulting byte slice is just a copy of the underlying byte sequence of the string. Currently, the Go compiler allocates a capacity of 32 bytes even if the string is empty. Similarly, when a byte slice is converted to a string, the underlying byte sequence is copied to create the new string. A memory allocation and deep copying of the contents are needed in both conversions because a string is immutable and a slice is not. So they both cannot share the same memory. When a string is converted to a rune slice, the byte stored in the string will be viewed as successive UTF-8 encoded byte sequence representations of many Unicode code points. Bad UTF-8 encoding representations will be converted to a rune value for the Unicode replacement character that we saw earlier. A similar process happens when you convert a rune slice to a string. Notice that each element in the new rune slice is of size 4 bytes. This is because the rune data type is an alias for int32 which takes 4 bytes. The conversion between rune slices and byte slices is not supported directly in Go. The bytes package in the standard library provides a function to convert a byte slice to a rune slice. If you want to convert a rune slice to a byte slice, you will have to implement it yourself. The easiest way is to use a string value as a hop. First convert the rune slice to a string, then convert it to a byte slice. This will be good enough for simple use cases. But be aware that each of these conversions requires copying the underlying bytes. For larger slices, you may implement the conversion using the helper functions in the UTF-8 package provided in the standard library. I'm not going into the details of this function, since this is not something we will have to do often. You should easily get this code by doing a simple search on the internet.
I mentioned that the conversions between strings and byte slices or rune slices require deep copying of the contents. The Go compiler makes optimizations for some special cases of such conversions, so that deep copies are not made. I will show you a few examples. These are just good to know information, but in practice, most of the time you don't even need to think about these details. The string to byte slice conversion in a range loop doesn't do the copying of data. Same when you do a conversion to retrieve an element from a map. Notice that a similar conversion when inserting a new value to a map will cause copying. Another scenario is when doing a conversion from a byte slice to a string for comparison. The last example is the byte slice to string conversion when you are concatenating two strings. There is a condition here that at least one of the strings should be a non-empty constant. The copying doesn't happen for the conversion, but to construct the new string, the contents of the key variable will be copied. Just like most other built-in types in Go, the built-in string type has no methods. For string manipulations, we can use the functions provided in the strings package in the standard library. One of the most common operations is joining multiple strings. For simple use cases, you may use the plus operator or the sprintf function. If you have to concatenate strings many times, the plus operator is not an efficient way. This is because each of these concatenation operations causes a new memory to be allocated for the resulting string and copying of the contents. These things are not specific to Go, this is the same in most of the other languages too. For some languages, the recommended way is to create a list of strings to join, and then join all of them at once. This is also an efficient strategy in Go. Since we already know the number of strings we want to concatenate, we can allocate the full capacity needed for the temporary buffer in one step. Even the built-in copy and append functions can copy bytes from a string to a byte slice. Another option is to use the bytes buffer in the standard library. The bytes buffer data structure provides helper methods to append bytes or runes like this in an efficient manner and construct the final value in one shot. However, to build strings more efficiently, the recommended way is to use the strings builder data structure. The implementation logic of both bytes buffer and strings builder is similar. The major difference is that strings builder doesn't expose the underlying byte slice it uses as buffer. The bytes buffer has a bytes method, which returns its internal buffer. Also, the strings builder has checks to ensure that the builder is not copied. When you construct the final string using the string method, the bytes buffer uses string conversion on its buffer to create the string. As we have seen already, this needs to do a deep copy of the elements to create the string. The strings builder instead uses methods from unsafe package to construct a string in place without copying anything. This can be done because strings builder doesn't expose its internal buffer and has checks to ensure a copy of its buffer is not created. Thus it is more efficient for building a string.